وأنا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وأقيم الصلاة وآت الزكاة صدق الله العظيم My respected brothers and sisters Alhamdulillah we thank Allah He has given us life in this month of Ramadan and He has given us the opportunity to perform deeds which are pleasing to Him The reward of every nafil is rewarded as if it was a fard and the reward of every fard is multiplied by 70 times. So many of us, keeping in mind that we have this obligation of zakat coming up, will be looking to pay our zakat during the month of Ramadan. We're all enterprising businessmen. We want to make the, get the most bang for our buck. So we're going to be looking to spend, give out our zakat during this month of Ramadan. And that's understandable. Whether that's a good practice, that's a different discussion. Inshallah, we'll get to that. But many of us will be our zakat during this month of Ramadan. So, not a problem. But there's a couple of things we should understand first and foremost. So first and foremost, it is a commandment of Allah. Giving zakat is a commandment of Allah. It is a form of worship. It is not just mere charity. It is not any general charity that is being given. It is a special form of worship. So that we should be very clear about. It is an ibadah. It is an ibadah. It is a form of worship. And the ibadah performed by the abd, by the slave of Allah. So the slave does not use his money where he wants. Rather, he will use it in the way the master demands. So my respected friends, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us to give zakat. And in every uh, commandment of Allah, there is a benefit. In this world as well as, as well as in the hereafter. There's no doubt about it. So in the hereafter, yes, it will cause the purification of our wealth here. We will be getting reward and so on. But in this very world, one of the wisdoms of zakat is that it will, it is the means of removing poverty. This is the means of removing poverty from the Muslims. When Mu'adh bin Jabal radiallahu anhu was going to Yemen, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam informed him amongst other things that you will t- collect money from their rich and you will give it to their poor. You will collect money from their rich and you will give it to their poor. So this is amongst the things that zakat is for. To remove the poverty of the poor Muslims. So we should keep that in mind. Removing poverty from the Muslims. And second, there will always be a benefit. Look, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in His complete wisdom, in His complete wisdom, He has ordered us to give how much? 20%? 50% of our wealth? Allah demanded us to give 2.5%. Now, us here in Canada, we are paying 15% tax on anything that you buy. And forget about your income. Depending on how much income you're making, you're going to be paying 30, 40, 50 percent more. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so easy, so easy that He demands that we give a whole 2.5 percent. And when we're going to talk about dunyavi things, things of the world, oh, 15 percent tax, no problem. But when you talk about zakat, 2.5 percent, now we're stretching it out like, you know, it's the biggest thing in the world. My friends, it's not right. Allah has made it so easy for us that 2.5% we have to give. Not only for the people who are considered, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has explained, you know, that is also defined in deen, who is considered wealthy, who is not. So that is a discussion that you should go seek out your local scholars and ask them. So through this, if all the rich Muslims, if Muslims were to take out 5% of their zakatable assets and they were to distribute it to the poor. There would not remain a single poor Muslim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through his infinite wisdom, his complete knowledge, has established this figure for us. So let's just now use zakat as we want. Is it just any type of charity? You want to build a hospital, give zakat. 
You know, you see some random poor person on the street, homeless person, and gives the cut. My respected friends, if you want to give charity, then there is every single day of the year to give charity. Right? Fail me. That every single day of the year, we can be giving charity. So give charity. But zakat has a very fixed set of recipients. إنما الصدقات للفقراء والمساكين والعاملين عليها إلى آخر الآية. So Allah defines who can receive zakat. Allah defines who can receive zakat. It is not just anybody. If you want to give general charity, you can give it throughout the year. But zakat, that 2.5% of zakat that Allah demands from us, goes to very fixed recipients. An extra 7.5%, you know, completed 10%. By all means, give it to, give it to any random or Muslim or non-Muslim. Zakat is fixed for the Muslims. Regular charity, you want to give it to whoever, no problem. You want to buy books for someone. You want to establish a library. You want to give it to a poor non-Muslim. By all means, do help out these people. You know, this is kind of like what happens on Baqarit, Eid al-Adha. The, the people are saying that if we're going to be spending so much money to slaughter an animal, then why do we, why shouldn't we give it to the poor? Say, hey, you want to give it to the poor? You got 364 days to do that. You want to give it to the poor? You have 364 days to do that. On this 365th day, on this day of Eid al-Adha, Hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa tells us that the most beloved deed in the eyes of Allah is the sacrifice of an animal. So why are you going to try to play games like this? We talk about on Baqarit, the charity of the poor. When we're talking zakat, and we say, instead of giving money to the poor, why don't we build a hospital? Okay, don't play games with the commandments of Allah. Eid <laughs> al-Adha, what is demanded from you is that you sacrifice an animal. If you're wealthy enough, sacrifice an animal. For zakat, you for this from this 2.5%, you give it to those people who Allah has highlighted in the Quran. So, and, you know, there's a further misconception which some people have, that one of those things mentioned in the Qur'an is fi sabirillah. Say, oh, so we can give it to a channel. You can give it to, you know, Islam TV, or you can give it to whichever TV channel that, that is being run by Muslims for Dawat or whatever. No, there's no scope for that. If you look at all these other seven things which are being mentioned, are they not fi sabilillah? They are also fi sabilillah. They are also fi sabilillah. So then, does the Quran have any useless words in it? Not a single letter in the Quran is useless. So why would Allah mention fi sabilillah after mentioning seven other fi sabilillahs? Think about that. Because the meaning is restricted. It is not talking about you know, donating for to the TV channel or donate, donating to this, you know, this Facebook page or dono, donating to this, whatever it might be. Fisa Birillah has a very specific and limited use. And again, go to your scholars, ask them. It's a bit of a longer discussion. So anyways, you know, my point that I wanted to make is that let's, or since we are going to be giving our zakat, First of all, let's understand that it is a commandment of Allah. So when giving zakat, you should understand that this is, I am obeying the commandment of Allah. Secondly, we should not feel like we are giving, we are doing some great favor to anyone. This was already the right of the poor person. This was already the right of the poor, poor person in the wealth that you were holding on to. So it's like a guy, he has, he's holding some money which doesn't belong to him in, in his pocket. He has a thousand dollars. He's like, oh, I'm rich, I'm rich, I'm rich. Money, money, money. Like, that's not your money. That's not your money. You're holding on to it. You have to give it to its rightful owner. But it's not your money. 
this is our situation. We might have this 2.5% in our pocket, yes, but it is not our money. It belongs. Someone else is deserving of it. And if it does not reach that person or those people, then we will be questioned about it. So we're not doing anyone any favors. We're doing ourselves a favor. And also, a person who does not give zakat, he hurts. He is not saving his own wealth from calamities. A person who gives zakat, he is safeguarding his own wealth, his own belongings from calamities. This is the mention, what is uh, meant, which comes in hadith. So we should have this realization that I'm not doing anyone any favors. I'm doing myself a favor. I am my own belong. I am taking out my own insurance policy with Allah. I'm taking out my own insurance insurance policy with Allah. So my respected friends, you know, these are a couple of points that I wanted to just put out there concerning zakat. That is not general charity. It is very specific, very restricted. It's not not a huge any means. Guy who has a thousand bucks, twenty-five dollars. You're probably gonna spend more than more than that on coffee during a month. Think about that. A person who has ten thousand dollars has ten thousand dollars and he gives two hundred and fifty bucks in zakat. It's not much. Hundred thousand dollars, hundred thousand. He gives two point five percent, two thousand five hundred. It's not much. Allah has made it very easy. So may Allah give us the tawfiq to use our wealth properly, to safeguard our wealth, to save it from any calamities, to build our place in the akhirah, and understand that this is the little thing that we, as a community, can come together to try to establish social justice amongst the Muslims. Try to help out your neighbor. Someone in need, family, check out that they're actually eligible to receive zakat. And if they are, help them out. Why not? This is what Allah demands from us. So, Allah give me first and all of us to use our wealth properly and to discharge the obligation on it. And inshallah, if not in this world, we won't meet each other. May Allah give us the chance to meet each other in Jannah, inshallah, having succeeded eternally. Subhanallah, bihamdi, subhanahu wa bihamdi, nashadu wa la ilaha illa anta, astaghfiruka wa natubu alayhi, subhanallah, rabbika rabbil izzati, amma yasikuna salaman ala al-muslim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alayhi.